Hello ladies and gentlemen, Nathan Cudgel here, and today, we're going retro. Yes, here we have a Nintendo Entertainment System from 1985, well, I don't know which year this one's from, but it first came out in 1985. First things first, this thing looks pretty massive, but it is very surprisingly light. Now, I've never really talked about it on the channel before, but I'm actually pretty big into retro games. Not so much anymore. Uh, more when I was younger, uh, maybe 4th and 5th grade was probably my peak in uh, in retro games. My favorite console was always the NES, that's what this is, a Nintendo Entertainment System. And my logic for why when I was 12 and there was way better games out there, with 3D graphics and great controllers, I chose to play something with a controller that looks like this. Well, I wasn't allowed to play M-rated games. Yes, instead of just biting the bullet and playing a kitty game, I played an old school kitty game. I, I don't really get it in hindsight either. I also do just like the look of this stuff though. I mean, it is, it is pretty cool. Now, I never actually owned a actual NES until just recently. I actually just bought this. Uh, I actually used to own a Retron 3, and uh, it's still somewhere around here, but I uh, never actually had enough money to get an actual NES. And so that's why now I've actually bought one. This cost me about 105 bucks, which isn't too much, but when you're 12, that's a lot of money. And it is the full package. Uh, it has all the cords and everything. It came with two of these controllers. What I was not thinking it would come with was it actually came with the actual manual. So here's the actual manual to Super Mario Brothers. I already have one of these with my original copy, but this is in a lot better condition than mine. So that's pretty cool to have. And what I was really not expecting, it has the instruction manual for the zapper, which uh, I'll show off in a minute. It also has the instructions for the original, just manual for the thing. It tells you how to set it up and everything on an old 80s TV. Not super helpful now, but still pretty cool to have. They're not in the best condition, but uh, for something I wasn't even expecting to come, that's pretty cool. As for the NES itself, it's, uh, I don't know, it's uh, pretty good condition. Some of these get pretty yellowed, you know, over time. Uh, this is uh, pretty good condition in that department, uh, may maybe a little yellowed, but it's about the original gray. As for the stack of games I got over here, I have, I guess now, two copies of Mario Brothers and Duck Hunt, uh, which uses that Wii Zapper I just mentioned. Here's that Wii Zapper I was talking about. Uh, you would, with the old CR TVs, it doesn't work with modern monitors and TVs, unfortunately, but uh, I'll show footage of it now. Uh, ducks would fly on the screen, you would shoot them, and a prick of a dog would laugh at you. Seriously though, fuck that dog. It is kind of cool because this is, I think this might be an early console actually, because uh, at least this zapper, in later years they made it orange, I guess so it would be less mistaken for an actual gun. But this is uh, one of the originals that came out in the first couple years and it's uh, actually gray. What damn it! This copy right here is actually my first ever uh, retro NES game. Uh, it's in really good condition. Then this is the one that came with this console. This console came with a copy as well. And the only way I can actually tell them apart is this one is a little scratched on the back. These games though are like worth literal cents. It, it was bundled with every console. So pretty much if you have an NES, you probably have a copy of Mario Bros somewhere. I don't have a ton of NES games. I did just order a couple more to make a follow-up video on. Uh, most of these games are from when I was younger, uh, and I couldn't really afford many games, but I was able to afford Mario Bros. 3, uh, which I really loved as a kid. The Legend of Zelda in this wonderful gold case, all of them came in a gold case like this. I didn't know that when I was young, though. So when I went to the retro store and bought this for like 30 bucks, I thought I was ripping them off. Like I, I was coming out the store thinking, <laughs> what, what fucking suckers? But, but no, they're all, they're all spray painted gold like this. I mean, it's cool, but I, uh, yeah, I, I wasn't as big a con artist as I thought I was. Really fun game though. Really fucking hard. Then we got Metroid. I always really liked this game, but I could never get really far in it. As a fantastic soundtrack, and that's pretty much all I had to say about it. I mean, I know it's really fun but I've never really gotten past the first couple screens of it. It's a pretty long game for an NES game, and it's just, well, it's, it's, it's pretty hard. I will beat it eventually, though, one of these days. Then finally, probably my favorite NES game, which I really picked up more for a joke, but it turned out that I really love it, Ninja Gaiden. Gaiden, whatever you want to call it. 
this is notorious as pretty much being the hardest, if not one of the top hardest NES games of all time. The thing is infamous for its difficulty, and I loved that as a kid. This actually still has the price uh, tag on it. I got this for like 15 bucks, which isn't too expensive. These are pretty cheap now. I actually got it because I wanted to trick my older brother. You see, I was going to tell him this is a really easy game I just picked up for cheap or something. Then I was going to, when he started playing it, I was going to make fun of him when he started losing and tell him it's a really easy game. How is he dying? When in fact it's like one of the hardest games but then he never really wanted to play it so that never actually happened on the bright side though i did play this game a ton because i did try it and it turns out i really love this game yes it's really hard but i also do like that in that you can just keep trying over and over again like if you die at a level you just start back at the last checkpoint if you die three times you just start back at the start of the level it's pretty much if you just keep ramming your head at the wall eventually something is gonna break that's pretty much what i like about this it it's hard but i i really like the the jumping in it and the movement as well as i i just like the combat in it i've never actually beat it though i have gotten really close uh, in one sitting i nearly beat this thing once but then i set it down and never picked it up again i do plan on beating this one day though ninja gaiden if you want a cheap nes game uh you could probably get it for a better price than 15 bucks now you could probably get it for maybe ten dollars or less but this is really fun because unlike super mario bros or something where you have three lives and if you die you restart the whole game which really sucks and it really pisses me off every time like i I would probably play this 10 times more if it just restart me at the start of the level, like newer Mario games do. Like, this is still probably my favorite Mario game, just because I've played it the most. I have beat Mario Bros, by the way, but, uh, I do really like it, but it just pisses me off every time just because the stakes are so high. Whereas with this, it's, it's just, you keep trying and eventually you'll get it. Yeah, it's hard, and it'll piss you off, but if you could just keep trying, eventually you'll get past the level, and you can just die 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 and fail again on the next level it doesn't restart you at if it restarted you at the start of this game i would probably break this thing ninja gaiden though if you want a cheap nes game this this is a good one and that's pretty much all my uh nes games uh, i did just order some more i'll talk about that in hopefully a upcoming video but i just wanted to kind of show off uh this NES, I just realized it's been sitting upside down in the background for half the video. But yeah, uh, I don't know, I thought it was pretty nifty, and I, uh, I thought it'd make a cool video to talk about. I will say one cool thing about this that I always thought looked really cool was, like, with my Retron 3, which I don't want to go get out, it's off-hidden somewhere, but I'll show a picture over here. You stick the NES game in the top of it. Whereas with this original NES, you actually open this up, get the NES game, and you just kind of stick it in there like a like a VHS tape, kind of. And you stick it in there, and then you just turn it on. Of course, there's no power, so it won't actually turn on, but you get what I'm saying. You can actually stick it in there. I, I, I always thought that was kind of neat. I will say one uh, problem with this NES is the 72-pin uh, connector. I uh, I don't know a ton about the technical aspects of this old stuff. Uh, you can see just right there, I was kind of struggling. If you really look in here, the pin it sticks in, in the very back of it, uh, I believe that is uh, been replaced. Because I've seen with other people, they just stick it in super easy and then they can pull it out super easy. Uh, but one of the first things I think that goes with these is that uh, connector in the back that connects to the bottom of the cartridge. And this one has been replaced. I don't know if they got a cheap replacement or something, or maybe it just needs to be broken in, but uh, that's why you saw me struggling right there a second ago. But that's just one minor thing. I, I, I don't really care. The 72-pin connector on the original was probably going to go anyways eventually. So I'm kind of happy to get a replacement already uh, instead of having to do it myself eventually. I'm not probably going to play this thing a ton, but it is nice being able to play my old games again on the actual NES. So I just love the look of this thing. I, I don't know if I'm going to display it anywhere or something, but I just love the look of it. It looks really cool. I haven't really shown off the uh, controller much, but I mean, the controller is uh, the pinnacle of classic. Y you can see right there, it's super basic. There's just two buttons, A and B, and a D-pad in start and select. It's as basic and simple as you can get, but it, it works for these old games because that's really all you used to need. Uh, if you want to get into retro games or anything, I would recommend uh, just you go around your town. You probably have at least one retro game store in your town uh, somewhere. Most have multiple. There is a pretty big market for these old games, and a lot of them, uh, I was complaining about them being expensive here, but they're still way cheaper than new games. You can pick up like eight NES games for every one new game you buy probably, of course, depending on the quality of the game. A higher quality, better game like Zelda will probably cost you quite a bit more than a, a cheapo cent game. That is one thing of these retro stores. They have tons.
tons of old NES games that are just garbage, just all lumped together for like a dollar a piece. The NES is great, it has some great games, but there's some shit in there. They they really did not have the best quality control. Pretty much all the games that I've shown off today though are, uh, I would recommend all of them probably. I've uh, played all of them pretty extensively and I would, I would recommend all of them. If you do want to get into retro games, uh, you can't really go wrong just picking up an original NES, or you can try, uh, you can do what I did when I was younger, uh, get a Retron. Uh, there's a million and a half different modern players. That was the brand I had, was a Retron. I had a Retron 1, which was just NES games. Then I got a Retron 3. Now they have a, up to a Retron 5, which has like Game Boy, Genesis, all, all sorts of different games you can play on it. And those are generally uh, quite a bit cheaper than just buying one of these. You could probably get a Retron 3 for like 70 bucks as opposed to like 105, and that can play Genesis, SNES, it can play way more than just this. But at the same time, there's something, something cool about having the original, you know? But yeah, I mean, it's definitely worth uh, getting into if you think you're interested in it at all. Uh, the Nintendo Switch uh, has most of these games on its online service. I think all these games I actually mentioned today are on that uh, that online service, which it does suck you have to pay a fee, but it's only like, what, 20 bucks a year, I think? And if you really just don't want to have to deal with any of this physical media stuff, you could just buy an NES Classic, though I think those are getting pretty expensive now. I don't actually own one. I, I kind of wish I had bought one, though, when they first came out and they were cheap. But that thing has all these games and, and tons more, so, I mean, that, that's probably the easiest way to get into it if you just don't want to have to deal with these cartridges at all. I will praise the NES in that these cartridges, I, I think, are pretty cool. This is cooler than a disc, in my opinion. Like, sure, it doesn't always age the best, but, like, you gotta remember, these cartridges are from the 80s. These are over 30 years old now. And for stuff made over 30 years ago now, uh, they've aged pretty well. I mean, I can't imagine a modern CD looking this good in 30 years. If anything, most of these modern CDs now will probably be scratched to shit destroyed or just unplayable now. I mean, of course, not if you take care of them and keep them in the case and stuff, but I mean, these things, you could throw this down a flight of stairs and it would still work perfectly fine. Just make sure you blow on it first. That is one thing. You, you always see them in the movies and, and it's an old myth that if you blow on the NES cartridge, it'll make it work. <laughs> Like, if you do that, because these things are pretty fickle sometimes, you, you'll stick it in and just nothing will happen. You'll put in the NES and nothing will happen. You have to take it out. <laughs> but that actually does not work. That does absolutely nothing. You know what you do? You get a Q-tip and some Windex, and you just you just rub in there on the little chip, and that, that's what makes it work. Trust me, that, that's, that'll make it work. Get a Q-tip, spray some Windex on there, and then just... They also make some actual like uh, professional cleaning products for this old stuff. I just use Windex though, and I just rub it on that chip, put it in almost every time it works immediately afterwards. Cause these things do get pretty dirty on that inside chip right in there. But other than that, I mean, if you just clean it every once in a while, these things will work great. I have no doubt that probably in another hundred years, this cartridge will still be around. And that's, that's pretty cool. Plus they make for cool collectibles, you know? Uh, if you wanna make a cool collection, they look great on a shelf or whatever, and you can pick up a lot of them for pretty cheap. But yeah, I've talked enough about the NES uh, for today. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, bye.